The brand that made old Porsche's prices spike and purists cry. <laughs> And like Liberty Walk, Rao Belt, Big Leaf, which is probably the only time I'm ever gonna say that. Which stands for Rough World Concept in German, like Japanese German, because it doesn't actually have like a direct translation, has been like a monster in bird box, like taking over the world, but nobody actually knows like what the f it is and where it came about. So let's uh let's learn some things shall we? Little Akira Nakai was seven years old, staying up past his bedtime watching good old fashion American movies. More specifically, the car ones. You know, the ones with the four wheels and the steering wheel and the, the, the racing and the dramatic music. Films like Gone in 60 Seconds, like the original. And the Cannonball Run all ran through his head and sparked the passion that stayed with him until his young adult years. Once he was older, Akira Nakai started in the scene through the World Drift crew in Ibaraji, Japan. Nakai began growing his name through drifting an iconic Toyota 86. Rough World became famous for their uh, tomfoolery on their local roads. These narrow, like winding Tauj mountain passes became Rough World's playground. Cars like the A86s and JZXs were modified to the point of extremes, with most of them being insanely low with tons of camber, stretch tires, and wheels that would probably make Jaspi happy. See, people are mad about stances if it's like something new. Psych! When your dad was buying car parts off Yahoo auctions, Nakai was initial Ding the out of some roads. Like a proper teenager just angsty as all <sighs> Sorry. Nakai was the leader of Rough World and over time the group became one of the most well-respected drift groups in Japan. It wasn't until later 1990s that Nakai dipped his toes into the world of the Porsche lineage. The purest of pure. The pinnacle of performance. The guys that you just hate to talk to at Cars and Coffee because God forbid you put aftermarket wheels on your air-cooled Porsche because they lose their minds. Wow, they're just something else sometimes. Anyway, Nakai got his first <coughs> Nakai got his first taste in Porsche when a damaged 911 came through his shop. Being at the young age of 28, Nakai eventually was like, "Oh, well, how about that, there, yo? Don't you gotta slap some of these white boys on there? Maybe have an old Stella Artusa and have some of their camels there. We could have some fun with this car. Just make it all poof, so that you can just look at it and go, wow, that's pretty neat. Maybe we could go up to the ice shack afterwards. It took six years for RWB to be founded, and by then, his first RWB build, dubbed the Stella Artois, after his favorite beer began to make headlines. Mademoiselle. I actually don't even know if Stella Artois is French. <laughs> the name of the company embodying what made this grassroots drifter special is a combination of his past drift roots and his build style. The cars began to mirror mid-70s 934 group race spec Porsches, but with a sprinkle of individualism. It didn't take a long time for the community to take notice. Let's not forget that um, the for the most part, I mean, the Porsche community is pretty pure. You don't have to go very far to see that everybody on the forums is already wanting to kill me because I want to go past the Euro ride height. And I mean, when news hit that there was somebody in Japan hacking old school Porsches to pieces, people went nutso. How could he, screamed the person that never owned a Porsche in his life. That is so wrong, screamed the person that daily drives a Toyota Yaris. RWB began to truly grow in popularity in the early 2010s, with his body kits making noise at the SEMA show of 2011. Nakai used his growth from RWB to promote his passion for racing. Events like the 12 hour of the Idlers race is just one of those events, proving to the world that although RWB's a little bit more of a, more, more of a form than a function, but like function still exists. And well, I mean, during that, RWB went mainstream. And now normally in the real world, companies that have a tendency to get really popular have a tendency to like blow up. They get like staff, you know, water coolers, stale bread that sits in, you know, pantries and stuff that never gets used. And that one can of jelly that sits out for four to six weeks. And the thing isn't tied up tight because the last person, John, used it and left the knife in there and it just sat out and then it collected some sort of like rabies style look to it and you know you just open the cupboards expecting there to be some sort of fancy food and, and there's not there's not there's oregano two pieces of bread and four empty cups for you to grab some water out of the sink over time from 2010 to like 2020 rwb continued to get bigger and you would see that 
you guess you really just don't know why. And a lot of it came down to the fact that as he grew within the SEMA community and as he grew as somebody who was just cutting up Porsches, a lot of people actually found it to be really fun. And they started to follow Akira Nakai and the RWB name over time because it was just the tightest that you could possibly do. A lot of times people started to spend money on this and they bought Porsche specifically to be modified for RWB kits. Most people own multiple RWBs over time. And although you do see them talked about a lot, they're not often really that common. In fact, they're fairly rare. And when you start to build the kit and put it on the car, they sell for a pretty penny. Nakai is still the only individual that comes out to modify these Porsches with the RWB kits. And there's a lot of stuff that he touches with the RWB name that he lets nobody else touch. He's like a roommate that like doesn't pay his rent, but he does show up with like your favorite boneless wings from Buffalo Wild Wings randomly, which is kind of a nice thing. I mean, he does drink a ton of Coca-Cola, smokes cigarettes, and drives the shit out of every car he touches, but that's the experience. Every single RWB is different in its own exaggerated way, whether it's the flare styles, cuts, wing, or unique parts that Nakai installs himself. I mean, after all, he is accredited with like the intense growth of stretch tire looks, the demon camber thing, and low slam cars in Japan just in general. He just wanted to do it with Porsches more. And that's what makes RW so neat. But here's the controversy. It's not just what RWB does to Porsches, it's how and why he does it. The products that are used on these cars aren't fancy. They're like farm and fleet. I mean, he gets them from his local hardware store in Chiba, Japan, which is, I'm assuming, kind of like farm and fleet. I mean, maybe. He puts the gasket sealer on with his fingers. That's it. Paying $40,000 and he's, he's just, Eyeballing it. Little sawzall to your $100,000 car and he's just, I mean, does it bother you at all? But I mean, sure, why not? F it. I mean, if you're a Porsche and you wanna slap a kid on it, that's fine, right? I mean, expect when you realistically, I mean, when you start realizing that you have to spend $40,000 to install the kit with wheels, suspension, tires, I mean, you've already just taken probably a pretty rare air-cooled Porsche and uh, made it a little bit Rough, <laughs> get it? RWB has caused controversy in the past due to his antics with installation, eyeing everything from cuts to mold, to even how nonchalant he is with causing imperfections. And RWB eyes, that's the soul of the car. Nothing should be perfect. People get upset that the company doesn't provide any motor modifications to those curvy cars that get made, but they really don't have a goal to do that. After all, the history of RWB is built into a passion of enjoying a car and being expressive. Whether you want to spend the money or not is really completely up to you. If you're looking for wheel tire suspension, check out fitmanindustries.com and let us know what you'd like to see us talk about next. I'm Alex from Fitman Industries. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell thing. We will see you later. Peace.